Om Agyan Timidandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Nena Tasmai Sri Gurve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Tadati Swam Padantikam Bande ham shi guru shi yuta pade kamalam shi guru vaishnavam cha shi rupam sagujatam sahaganad ragunatam pitam sajivam sadvaitam sarvadutam parijana sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Bitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Sasunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarubischa Kripa Sindhu Pyebacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 16, The Pale Vrata Process of Worship, Text Number 25. Fagunasya Male Pakse. Dwadasaham Payoratam. Archayed Aravindaksham. Bhaktya Paramayan Vitaha Falgunasya Yamale Pakshe Dwandasaham Payo Ritam Archayed Aravindaksham <coughs> Bhaktya Pardamayan Vitaha Chant Falgunasya. Of the month of Falguna, 
February, March. Amale, during the bright, Pakse, fortnight, Dwadasa Aham, for 12 days, ending with Dwadasi, the day after Ikadasi. Paya Vratam, accepting the vow of taking only milk. That's really far out for the vegans, huh? Can they handle that one? <laughs> the vegans will think, oh, what do we, we have to fast completely now. <laughs> Archayet, one should worship. Arvinda Aksam, the lotus eyed Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhaktya, with devotion, paramaya, unalloyed, anvita, surcharged, surcharge, that means extra charge, charge is charge, but then surcharge means more charge, <laughs> highly charged, <laughs> that's what it means. Translation, in the bright fortnight of the month of Falguna, February and March, for twelve days ending with Dwatasi, one should observe the vow of subsisting only on milk, and one should worship the lotus-eyed Supreme Personality of Godhead with all devotion. Purport. Worshipping the Supreme Lord Vishnu with devotion means following Archana Marga. Sravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam padasevanam archanam bandanam dasyam sakyam atma nivedanam. One should install the deity of Lord Vishnu or Krishna and worship him nicely by dressing him, decorating him with flower garlands and offering him all kinds of fruits, flowers and cooked food nicely prepared with ghee, sugar and grains. One should offer, also offer flame, incense and so on while ringing a bell as prescribed. This is called worship of the Lord. Here it is recommended that one observe the vow of subsisting only by drinking milk. This is called peyo vrata. As we generally perform devotional service on ikadasi by not eating grains, it is generally recommended that on dwadasi one not consume anything but milk. Peyo Vrata, an archon of devotional service to the Supreme Lord, should be performed with a pure devotional attitude, bhaktiya. Without bhakti, one cannot worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhaktiya mam abhijananti yavanyas chasmi tattvataha. If one wants to know the Supreme Personality of Godhead and be directly connected with Him, knowing what He wants to eat and how He is satisfied, one must take to the process of bhakti. As recommended here also, bhaktiya paramayanvitaha. One should be surcharged with unalloyed devotional service. Om magyanti mirandasya gyana jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Hmm. So um, now is the first instruction given by Kashapa Muni to his wife in order for her to fulfill her desire to get the, a benediction from the Supreme Lord to have her sons again regain the heavenly realm. <laughs> so now you'll hear for the next series of verses some of the austerities that she must perform and how she performs them and it goes on this, there's 61 verses in this chapter, 62. So you'll see in this, in this Pāyo Vrata process of worship is a bona fide process. Devotees can also do it. It's not like we it's just read about it. This can also be done, but you have to do it under the guidance of not someone who can tell you exactly how to perform it. And there are devotees who know this process, so... And it's very powerful 
one can fulfill any any spiritual desire simply by executing this particular vow strictly. And you'll see how Diti, Aditi, I'm sorry, Aditi is very determined because any, if you chant Hare Krishna, you can continue to chant and somehow come to higher, higher stages. But when you perform these rituals, everything has to be done exactly. If there's any discretion or deviation or mistake in the worship, the whole thing is lost. So these things are very hard to perform because the, the rules and regulations have to be followed exactly. Otherwise, there's, the result is not there. And you'll see Diti, uh, how, how determined she is. And here, Prabhupada talks about a little bit um, about us, that um, Diti worship is called um, Archana Marg. Marg means path. <laughs> the path of Diti worship. And we have two paths, Bhagavad Vidhi and Pancharatriki Vidhi. Bhagavad Vidhi is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord in the association of devotees and engage in practical devotional service. Pancharatriki Vidhi is the worship of the deity. And there's a whole series of shastras called the Pancharatrika uh, shastras, which were actually uh, authorized and given by Sri Narada Muni. He is the guru of Pancharatriki Vidhi. And Pancharatriki Vidhi is what we do here um, is a little bit less than what is done in most temples around the world because most of the deities are Radha Krishna, Jagannath here. You have Gornitai, Panchatattva, and the standard is very simple because the emphasis on here is on Bhagavad Vidhi not so much on Pancharatriki Vidhi. That is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and preaching the glories of the Lord to the conditioned souls. So wherever you see Panchatattva, the mood is preaching, the mood is kirtan. <laughs> That's the mood here. And wherever Panchatattva comes, they establish that mood of preaching and kirtan. Sometimes you wonder why there's so many programs here for preaching and kirtan. It's because that's Gornitai's program. <laughs> or Panchatattva's program. But some deity worship is necessary in order to keep the consciousness purified. So we come to the temple. Now when we think of deity worship, we don't just think of the pujari doing the work. Deity worship means when you enter into the temple, you're in the mood of worshiping the, of the deity, of course, we worship the deity by doing kirtan, by hearing classes, this is also. But there is a certain etiquette and behavior and also a mood before the deity that must be adopted in order for us to appreciate the forms of the Lord and to also offer our bhakti to the forms of the Lord like that. Lord, Lord Chaitanya is very kind, he's very merciful, and he's very, what is it? less strict than other deities. If you're worshiping Radha Krishna, it's very strict. If you're worshiping Jagannath, it's less strict. And if you're worshiping Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman, it's a little less strict. But if you're worshiping uh, Gornitai, there's hardly any rules and regulations. But Prabhupada said, don't take advantage of that. <laughs> Make it as nice as you can. Because Krishna has come in the form of his deity and he accepts that worship. And that acceptance is our benefit if he accepts our worship. And here Prabhupada is giving, he said one should install the deity of Lord Vishnu or Krishna and dress him nicely, flower garlands, fruits, flowers, cooked food and grains, ghee, sugar. It doesn't, he's not a vegan. <laughs> he likes milk products. <laughs> um, in the, in the temples around the world, we have what is called the Mangal Arti offering, which is called the white offering. And the whole offering is white. That means all you get is milk sweets on that. Now you offer, you offer 
sweet rice, burfi, sandesh, uh, koa, uh, what else? Um, uh, hmm? Pera, para, yeah. You call it peta, I say para, para, para. I used to cook it, I know what it is. <laughs> para. Uh, yeah, what else? And we also offer hot milk in the morning to the, to the Lord on the altar. So the, the Mangalarti offering is, all, is called the white offering. Everything is a milk offering like that. In the old days in Krishna consciousness, when, we, when I was in the, we had a brahmachari ashram. And we would have some kind of uh, uh, competition to who could uh, very strictly follow all the, uh, the temple rules and activities. In other words, <clears throat> well, we had different kinds of competition. We had quizzes and stuff. And the winner would get the Mongol RT offering for one whole day. So that would be the reward. You'd get all this milk sweets. And then the next morning you can't walk, you know, because you <laughs> can't even see what to speak about trying to walk. <laughs> All the sugar and milk and you you think, well, I made it to Vaikuntha. <laughs> Everything is buzzing here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we it's a beautiful offering. And... And of course, in our temples, we have six offerings of the day. You have the Mangalarti, then you have the. Uh, we have one in between breakfast and Mangal and um, after Mangalarti and breakfast. That was called the seven o'clock offering, and then we have one again at nine thirty, nine o'clock. That is the breakfast offering, and Raj Boga is number four. The afternoon offering at around four o'clock, four thirty, three thirty around. It's the other one, and then the last one is the, uh, okay, then the evening offering, too. And that one, I can tell you what's on each offering, too, because each offering has a certain, uh, what we call it, menu. Uh, the afternoon offering is cheesecake and fruit, like that. In the evening, it's sabji puri, like that. For Rajbog, it's usually about 15 to 20 preparations of various types of foodstuffs. You know, dal, rice, and sabjis, and curries, and uh, what we say, uh, um, breads, and what is the other thing? Chutneys. Chutneys and what? Huh? Sweets. Sweets and Drink. Huh? Drink. Drink, what else? There's one thing I'm, I'm missing. Savories, yeah, savories, okay. Savories are pakoras and, and um, what else? Huh? Kachoris, yeah, like that. And so um, and when you have Radha Krishna deities, you really you get these beautiful, and the devotees go mad off to the, the, maha, the maha, you know. <laughs> and then the last one is Shayana offer, RT, where you offer condensed milk. And then you sing to the deities just before they go to sleep. The curtains open at around 8.30. And then there's a very slow and sweet loving bhajan, usually something about uh, Vrindavan bhajan. And then the deities come out in their uh, evening outfits, which are just simple, take off all the jewelry and leave one strand of jewelry on Radharani and Krishna. And they're in their night outfits, and the, the lights are low. It's very sweet. You feel like you're in the spiritual world. And then someone sings very nicely, and then they get condensed milk, like that. And that's the, that's the last offering. Then the ladies take rest, like that. So in our temples like that, one where we have Radha Krishna deities, they, there's a lot of emphasis on very gorgeous deity worship, very nice outfits. The outfits sometimes cost thousands and thousands of euros just for one outfit for the deities. We have a, we go to Rindavan or Mayapur because they have the expert ladies who know how to sew. 
and they make these beautiful, very ornamented and very fancy with various types of lace and various types of impressions. They make beautiful, beautiful. And then we would always offer a new outfit on a different occasion, like uh, for John Mastami, the Didi, all the Didis would get a new outfit uh, for, you know, for Gaur Purnima. And all of the major holidays, they'd all get, they all get new outfits coming from either Vrindavan or Mayapur. And then the, then the, the deity worship. And sometimes you have three altars where there's Gornitai on one altar. And this is many of the temples are like that. Radha Krishna is in the middle and you have Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra on the right. And sometimes you have Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman on the very far right. Like that. And these are the deities. A few temples, they have Gornitai in the middle. <laughs> because those temples are sacraton temples, or they're more like preaching temples. So they put Gornitai in the middle. So uh, if you go around the world and travel, you'll see and the deities are so gorgeous, how they're dressed and so beautiful. I mean, the altars and decorations, canopies, and very ornate or altars. <clears throat> Just like I spent 20 years in Chicago and Chicago has one of the most beautiful temple rooms in the world, the, the, the Shringasan. Back in the year 1980s, cost us $20,000. That was in the 1980s. Now it's about worth about 50000 And Prabhupada's Vyasasan is so beautiful. Oh my God, you can't see, you won't see a Vyasasan anywhere in the, in, in the world like better than even Mayapur, than in Chicago. Chicago's got a beautiful view. It's got stairs going up, and Prabhupada's sitting up high, and then there's columns, big, huge, these uh, teakwood columns with a huge dome over Prabhupada like that, with lights, and um, it's a huge, it's huge. It takes up a big place in the temple. And Prabhupada's up, so, you know, nobody can sit in front of him, because <laughs> even if you do, he's still above you, you know. So, yeah, that's, and so if you go around the world, you'll see uh, many, many very gorgeous arrangements for worship. And Prabhupada wanted that. He wanted the deities to be decorated and worshipped very nicely. And of course, if you go to our Mayapur, you see, you know, the uh, Radha Madhava Astasaki and the beautiful Gornitai altar and Panchatattva altar and, and Lord, Lord, the Shringadeva and Prahlad. They all have their separate altars in separate places. Actually, to worship Lord Nisringadeva, you have to give him his own altar. Generally, he's not a, he doesn't get worshipped on the same altar as Radha and Krishna or any of the other deities. Like that, he's he's unique in the Shringadev. So all of these uh, ways to worship the deity is so sweet and nice. And it just you, when people walk into the temple, they think, "Have I made it back with the Godhead?" <laughs> so beautiful, like that. So that's uh, that's our movement. <clears throat> We've been successful in establishing gorgeous deity worship around the world. <clears throat> and here it mentions that on, on the Akadasi is one of the things that that uh, she will have to follow. She has to fast on Akadasi by not, of course, Prabhupada said, no eating of grains or beans on Akadasi. But that's, there's five ways to follow Akadasi. And each one is more stricter than the other. And the, the strictest and the traditional way that a codice is followed is you you don't take anything on a codice. Every a codice is near gel. No water, no food. From sunset, from sunrise to one day to sunrise the following day. 24 hours, nothing. Uh, a little bit less than that is you drink only water on a codice. A little bit less than that is that you don't take any 
you know, you just take milk and fruit on the codice. And that's what Prabhupada recommended we do, just take fruit and milk on the codice. That was his recommendation for our society. But he didn't strictly push it. He just said, you know, little fruit, a little milk, and chant Hare Krishna, and that's all. You'll hear it in his lectures. That's his. And then a little bit less than that is don't, don't take any cooked foods on the codice. Nothing cooked, just raw, like salads or nuts and fruit like that. And the last one and the most easiest is which Prabhupada gave us, as he says here, just don't eat grains and beans. Because he knew the Westerners can't handle all this austerity. So. <laughs> and if you go to places, in some places in the world, Codice is like the worst day in the wor of, of everybody's life, you know. But actually, Kakadasi is mother of devotion. That is Bhakti Vinod Thakur's statement. He says the Kadasi is the mother of devotion. So we look forward to Kadasi because it's, it's a day where we can chant more rounds and decrease bodily needs and activities and we can purify their consciousness and the senses and gradually become more and more fixed in devotional service. So Akadasi is Ekadasi. Eka means one, Dasi means ten. Akadasi simply means eleven. Eleven days bef after the full moon, or eleven days after the new moon, like that. So twice a month we follow Akadasi. Now Prabhupada says something here that we're not so much aware of, that on Duodasi, the next day, one should not consume anything but just milk. The following day. <laughs> so, of course, we don't follow that, do we? But mm, it's written. Here it is. <laughs> if you're if you're very serious about executing Krishna consciousness exactly the way Prabhupada wants it, do it. Nothing but milk on the Adwatasi day. Okay, that's the day after. And then there's the TT. TT is a certain period of time that where you break the fast, and that during that time it's usually usually a few hours. By breaking the fast within the TT, and then one gets the benefit of the ecodicy, and one fails to do that, they minimize the benefit of the ecodicy that they followed. So that has to be followed also. So there are many, this is all Pancharatriki Vidi, and you'll find Pancharatriki Vidi is just books of rules and regulations. <laughs> you can't even learn all of the rules and regulations, it's impossible. <laughs> but that is the way to worship the deity, <laughs> like that, there's so many like that. But then again, the whole point is being mentioned here that bhakti has to be the basis of one's activity. Without bhakti, one cannot worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as Prabhupada writes in the purport here. So Krishna is attract. he's called bhaktavatsal. That means he is attracted by bhakti. He's not jnanavatsal, yogavatsal, karmavatsal. He's bhaktavatsal. That means he's, he is attracted by your bhakti and not by your knowledge, or your activities, or your austerities. Bhakti is what attracts Krishna. Like that. Yeah. Bhakti mam avijananti yavanyas chasmi tattvataha, Krishna says. And only by devotional service, bhakti, can I be known. Only bhakti is the one that, like that. <coughs> So bhakti is the essence of all of the activities, but the activities are so nice and so sweet. So deity worship, as there are many devotees who have dedicated their lives to serving the deity the whole time. In fact, Srila Prabhupada gave that instruction to His Grace Janani Vas Prabhu in Mayapur. He said, stay with Radha Madhava your whole life and serve them. 
And he's done that. The only time he left when was to travel around the world to raise money for uh, the Temple of Understanding for the Parapitas. He, he brought Lord Nityananda's transcendental shoes around the world. They came here <laughs> to raise money for the Temple of Understanding. A temple of, yeah, what was it called? A Temple of... Huh? Vedic Planetarium. Temple of Understanding was another is another project. Yeah. Okay. So uh, these are some of the things. Jai Shri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So deity worship is really sweet, and it uh, wherever you see deities, the devotees are happy because the deities exude so much opportunities for service. And they give so much mercy. We can also, we should also pray to the Lord in His deity form, and to give us bhakti, to engage us in His service, to purify us from our material tendencies and desires like that. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. <laughs> Sri Devi. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, thank you. When we do something in bhakti, it is only for the pleasure of the Lord. But here, Kashyap Muni is giving her this process saying, worship the Lord in pure devotion, but she's asking for something. She yeah. wants something from the Lord for right. doing this. So yeah. how is it pure bhakti? It's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's peo vrata worship. <laughs> it's a certain set of rules and regulations if she follows that. She'll get them that mercy. So you but, said, she, but it says here, Prabhupada also says here, she has to do it with the devotion. Mm. So this particular ritual is geared to uh, uh, please the Lord. This ritual was given to Kashyapa by Lord Brahma. Mm. So Lord Brahma, he got it from Krishna himself. Mm. So she follows that, but if she does it with bhakti, then she'll get the results. So that means, and you also mentioned in the lecture, that devotees can also do this, it's bona fide, but they must very carefully follow it to get their spiritual desires fulfilled. Unless, you, unless your spiritual master tells you not to do it. <laughs> it's just if, you, should, you should ask your spiritual master first before you do it. Right, right. And if you don't have a living spiritual master, you should go to a very senior devotee who's on the level of a spiritual master and get blessings and permission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just, you know, you, you can't just do it. She's coming to Kashyapa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's not doing it on her own. Right, right. So it must be under authorized uh, direction. Right. And then you should be capable of subsisting only on milk for those 12 days. That's another thing. Because you're, she has to subsist only on milk. Is that what it says? Yeah, for those 12 days that she must only be taking milk, right? That's my understanding. I didn't read that yet. No. Oh, okay. Mm. So one must be also it, capable of... I think you're of, right, but I'm not, I, didn't, it, I didn't read it anywhere so far. Okay, maybe I, I didn't understand it said correctly. said on Dwadasi, you mm -hmm. take only milk. Okay. But on Dwadasi, to break the fast, we break it with grains during the titi. So are we supposed to just take little grain and then rest of right. the day milk? Like that? Apparently. Okay. So Prabhupada writes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. But did did do devotees follow it? Was, was were the devotees following it with Prabhupada when Prabhupada was here? No. Even when Prabhupada was here they weren't following it. So. 
This is the first time I'm actually reading this Guru Maharaj, that on Dwadashi we must take only milk. I never heard it in all these 20 years in Krishna consciousness. Welcome to the new <laughs> transcendental knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you. But then again, it should be ahimsa milk. <laughs> Otherwise, this milk that you drink in the store is not milk, it's just white water. That's all it is. I him some milk. Mm. Yesterday, Raghavanjari Mataji milked a cow that has been given milk for 17 years after giving birth to her baby calf. Mm, for you. 17 years. 17 years. After the birth of her calf, she's still giving milk. Mm, that's, that's pretty amazing. Yes. Really amazing. <clears throat> that means she's a devotee. <laughs> <coughs> Devotees don't get tired, right? <laughs> Devotees don't retire. <laughs> It's like, you know, when you're in the material world, when you get to a certain age, you think, oh, now it's retired. You get your rocking chair, <laughs> and you, you know, you get Knitting. Your, you know, whatever else you want to do. And, you know, ladies knit, and the men just smoke their pipe. <laughs> 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 hey, you just, you, you just, you're just like a vegetable. You know? <laughs> but the Krishna consciousness gets better as you get older. Mm -hmm. He's always thinking how to serve. Mm. And Prabhupada, he, up to his last moment, he he was preaching Krishna consciousness. Even when he couldn't talk, he was still preaching. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Soumya Dhatri. Thank you for your lecture. I the same uh, want to ask how to break, how to break a kadashi when on dvadashi when it's milk. The same. You know, breaking is not eating a big pizza. That's not breaking a kadashi. <laughs> <laughs> breaking is you take one little grain of rice, one grain of rice, and that's enough. In Jagannath Puri, they give you this. What do you call it? It's hard rice. It's like a rock. And this, we, we usually get this hard rice and take it with us and bring it. Usually comes in a little stocking like thing, it's wrapped. And it's mentioned you take one of those grains on every Duodasi and you break the Ekadasi. I have a whole bunch. Anybody wants some, just come and get it. <laughs> So yeah, that's all. It's not like, okay, I'm breaking the codice. Where's the sandwich? Okay. Where's the pizza? <laughs> we have uh, Uddhava Mitra. He, wa he wants to ask a question right behind you. He's coming up. He's going to sell you a book. All right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for lecture. Uh, I wonder, like you mentioned about uh, loving exchanges uh, to serve with devotion. So I wonder either like serving with the attitude of appreciation, respect is also part of this loving exchange. Like, yeah. It's this also some kind of expressing love. Yeah. Appreciation, gratefulness is all part of bhakti. And it's actually a, a very intricate and very necessary part of bhakti. Very few people come to the platform of devotional service. It's very rarely achieved. So to be a, to develop appreciation and gratefulness and respect is a way to, you know, reciprocate the great gift of devotional. Devotional service is a gift. Mm -hmm. so this Not everybody can get it because many people have access to it but they can't get it because it's they're not qualified to receive it for whatever reason. And you'll see a person, maybe somebody who's laying in the gutter, he's drunk, 
he comes to bhakti. What was his qualification? You can't understand it. And that's why only by the grace of the spiritual master does it happen. No other way. It's rare and it's something that is very, very valuable. Something that's rare doesn't mean it's valuable. But, but yeah, we have, there's many, there's rare diseases, right? <laughs> But they're not so valuable. But something that is rare and valuable is is something very, it's more like a treasure. And that's bhakti. To get the opportunity is very, very rare and very, very valuable. So to be grateful is just natural. We always, we'd always say to be, if you're not grateful, you're a great fool. So to be grateful, this is a way to achieve devotion, or this is also yeah. a part of the of devotion. It opens you up for more mercy, because being grateful means to appreciate what you already have. Those who are grateful can't even see what they already have. They want more, but they don't even appreciate what they already have, nor do they even know what they have. When you when you're grateful, you help. More or less, is a a lens, a vision, on seeing what the mercy, what mercy you have been given. Mukam karoti vachalam pangu lagate girim yat kripa karatham mande sigurundi natarinam. Keep that verse foremost. Mukam Koroti Vachalam, you know the verse? By the, by the grace of the spiritual master, uh, a, blind, uh, a lame man can cross mountains, a dumb man can recite beautiful poetry, and a, lame, and a uh, blind man can see the stars. And that's not just some eulogy or some exaggeration, it's a fact. Some of the greatest devotees were blind. <laughs> Suradas, you know, have you heard of Suradas? Suradas, he's uh, he was a blind blind from birth, but he was seeing Krishna in his mind all the time, and he wrote beautiful poem poetry. There was one blind man in in. Uh, in uh, Varsana Dham, Radharani's place, Varsana. If you go to Varsana, there's a beautiful painting on the wall. It was painted by this blind man. He couldn't see, but he painted this beautiful poem, painting. It's amazing. Where is that? Which temple? It's uh, Varsana Dham in, uh, in Vrindavan. Uh, the last one. The biggest one, the, oh. the big, big stairs going down. Oh, no, 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 not Sriji Mandir, no. Not Man Mandir, not Sriji Mandir. It's, it's near Morkut, where Radharani and Krishna changed forms. Radharani became Krishna and Krishna became Radharani. Oh. They were dancing like peacocks. And there is a... This is the first I, one. The first. It's off to the side a little bit, you know. and there's a wall that kind of slants. You go walk along that wall, and that leads to the to the Jamuna. And there's a temple there. I think what he what he painted was Radha and Krishna dancing as peacocks. Yeah, yeah, that's what he painted. That's the actual painting, and he was blind. <laughs> Now you see the power of bhakti. <laughs> bhakti is so powerful, even animals. There was one yogi, one yogi, he was living in Varsana Dham also. I mean, great devotee. And he couldn't walk. And so 
he could never get any food because he couldn't walk. So there was one lion who used to come, and that lion would go, and he would tie this uh, bag around the lion's throat, chest. He would have had a little pouch, and the lion would go from place to place, and people would give food to the lion in the bag, and then that lion would take it to his master. <laughs> a lion. <laughs> Yeah, that's in Varsanada. This literally happened. Yeah, this was. Yeah, of course that person is no longer living. He left the planet, but but that, there's a story. You go there and you'll hear that story about the lion who was begging on behalf of his master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, if you doubt the power of devotional service, then you are. The power of devotional service is so powerful that you can't understand how powerful it is. It's very powerful. We're sitting on something that is so, so extraordinarily great, this, this devotional service, because it can capture Krishna himself. And what can, can, what can capture Krishna? Nothing. <laughs> but bhakti is so powerful that he can capture Krishna. That means if you capture Krishna, you got everything else. <laughs> There's nothing left to help. <laughs> Very powerful. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has made that mercy available easy. Krishna wasn't so easy distributing the mercy of bhakti. He made many rules and re uh, requirements, but Mahaprabhu has has kind of slackened all the rules and, and just thrown them away and made it so easy. Mahaprabhu is so merciful. And the same power is available that Krishna offered. Mahaprabhu is offering the same. It's very powerful. You can see it when you're out in book distribution. It's a little indication of the shakti of bhakti. <laughs> But you know, bhakti is so powerful. I mean, we have the power to change the world right now and bring it back to Krishna consciousness. And that's what's, that's what's going to happen. What is happening now is paving the way for Lord Chaitanya's uh, golden era, what's happening now. So there's a dark era coming up right now. It's going to be very dark for the next couple of years. But that's just to purify, get rid of the, clean up the world a little bit, get rid of all the sinful activities. And then I'll eventually Lord Chaitanya's movement will come. And then the only way it'll come is by Harinam Sankirtan. So that will bring it about. So when going out on Harinam Sankirtan, you should know you're doing the highest and best and the most beneficial of all services by chanting and dancing and performing Harinam Sankirtan. It is the, the supreme bhakti, supreme, supreme seva. And it was done by Lord Chaitanya himself. <laughs> so. Okay, so I promised I'd end early today because there, the devotees need one, to go. There is one question, Maharaj, maybe here in the internet, if you like. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I understand the importance of Ekadashi. My question is, what is the importance of Chaturmasya? Chaturmasya? Mm. <laughs> <coughs> we don't follow Chaturmasya the way it's been given. The way it's been given is that <clears throat> Prabhupada made it easy. He said, in the first month, no spinach, second month, no yogurt, third month, no milk, fourth month, no erdal. These are the four months, and you fast. That's what Prabhupada made it so easy. But I saw one devotee, I was with him in Nuvrindavan, he wanted to follow it exactly. So that month, <clears throat> you don't cut your hair, you don't shave, you don't cut your nails, 
and uh, there's many other rules and regulations. And you eat only once a day, and you eat only kitchri. And how you eat is also interesting. You put your hands behind your back like this, and the plate is on the front and front, and you bend down, you don't use any spoons, and you just get to the plate with your mouth, and you eat like that. And then when you come up, that's all you get that day. That's Chaturmasya. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> One devotee did it at New Vrindavan. He did it for four months. <clears throat> but it's karma kanda. And right after four months, he got married. <laughs> and and the, he was a brahmachari before that. <laughs> and then when he had his first child, <laughs> <laughs> the temple authorities, they gave him the name. He asked for a name, and, and they named him Kitri. <laughs> the first kid was named Kitri. He's still around. I know him. His name is Kitri. <laughs> so Prabhupada didn't want us to follow the Chaturmasya authority. What it is, is during the rainy season in India, four months of the rainy season, the sages and saints who traveled and preached, they stopped for those four months. And during those four months, they performed the vows of Chaturmasya, like that. They do it, the great sages and saints. And then after the four months, they go back out and start traveling and preaching again. But Prabhupada gave us, we don't even follow what Prabhupada gave us, and he wrote it in the Chaitanya Charitamita, one should follow, one must follow these four rules. No spinach the first month, no yogurt the second month, no milk the third month, and no erdal the fourth month. Just erdal, which usually comes in the form of papardams. We get these poppers, you know. That's erdal. Like that. Huh? Italy's and doshas, yeah, they use our doll for that too. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, so that's the that's the austerity Prabhupada asks us to do. Just to follow that. Like that. He didn't give us much information about it, but if you you can find out more about Chaturmasya. Yeah? There's a lot of austerities. It's not recommended for women either. It's just for for the men. But it's karma kanda. It's not. It's not. Four months. You know, no cutting care, no shaving, no cutting nails. <laughs> um, there's other bodily austerities too. I don't know all of them. You'd have to do a little research. Okay, that's the time, nine o'clock. And that's the cutoff because the devotees have to be out by 10 according to uh, Ananta Prabhu. He wants everyone out by 10. So, Sarira vidya jal jatendriya tehe kaha jivay phele visaya sagare tarmadye jivayati lova moya sadormati dake chikta kutina samsare Krishna Bhada Doya Moy Kari Bhada Jiva Jai Swa Prasad and Diloba Sayanamrita Pa O Radha Krishna Gunaga O Premida Kor Chaitanya Nitai Sri Krishna Prasadam Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Sri Panchatatva Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Hare Krishna <laughs>